Hello lads and lasses, it's the Nige Nerd and you just caught me getting ready to go to boarding school. Being an ambassador for virginity, I need to find a way to stay gaming while in school so I don't lose my title of Grand Virgin Wizard of the Supreme High Court of Lonely Gamers. But I have a few tricks up my sleeve that I'm going to put in place to maximize chastity. When I was a wee little lad, I loved video games. They meant everything to me. I spent most weekends in front of the television either by myself or with my cousin just having a good time on any games we could get our hands on, from the fan favourites of Wii Sports and the old LEGO games to... What? I have sisters and I finished everything else that I had at the time and the Wii was a family console. Anyway, when I was 11, my parents decided it would be a good idea if I went to boarding school. The home for rich pricks, socially awkward know-it-alls and entitled yet athletic bullies. But I wasn't really worried about any of this. What I really cared about was that I was going to be leaving my home, my safe haven, where all my video games resided. Going to boarding school was like having a sweet voice in a Catholic boys choir and being invited for tea at the priest's house. Who knew when I would go back home? I was home in six weeks. Nevertheless, I still wouldn't have access to my games whenever I wanted. So me and all the other boys that suffered from early stages of self-inflicted celibacy decided to do something about our gaming drought. One of the first popular games in my school was Tanky Online. It was one of those shitty internet games with mediocre textures and a massive audience. It wasn't anything special unless you were one of the kids addicted to the damn thing. They taught me the definition of grinding on a game. Eventually, it just got annoying. It was basically what Fortnite is to me today. So when the school banned it indefinitely, I was elated. In those days, my school let us use iPods on the weekends and everyone had one. Most people just used to use them to listen to music, take pictures with their friends and watch movies that they would download ILLEGALLY. But us gamers had a different agenda. We didn't want to settle for dumb casual games like Flappy Bird, no. We wanted the full console experience, so many of us played games like Injustice, Shadow Fight and Minecraft. Oh, Minecraft. One day someone found a Minecraft installer on one of the school computers, but no one knew or cared how we got there. What mattered was that it was shared to everyone as quickly as possible. See, Minecraft was great because we would play on LAN servers with each other and basically run death matches. We would give each other the day to gather resources and make any alliances we needed and then at night we would strike. We had a few bullshitters as every school does. Ours was notorious for saying shit like he sells Minecraft maps to big name YouTubers and what pissed me off was how people actually believed him but regardless, it was seriously wicked fun. But one secret game everyone wanted to play was Grand Theft Auto. One of my friends had GTA Vice City on his iPod and one Saturday afternoon, a big crowd of about 20 people were spectating this phenomenal achievement of playing a console game on the go and in school nonetheless. As his luck would have it, a teacher was walking around and when they saw the crowd, they immediately shut down the operation. His iPod was confiscated and he was isolated for the rest of the day. Isolation is when they take you into a room by yourself and leave you there for like 8 hours. But they bring you food and water. My guy was 11 and was imprisoned for playing GTA. Teachers then made the rule that if they caught you playing 18 rated games on your iPod, it would be confiscated. Yes, 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 I know. What a shitty place to grow up. But I mean... <laughs> it is what it is. It is what it is. A year later, after our exams, we decided that we didn't want to hand in our iPods anymore and would keep them overnight. Now, this was an extremely illegal practice and was so bad that its punishment was just short of a suspension. But I didn't give a fuck. I was caught three times. But it wasn't the end of the world, it just meant that it took me a lot longer than expected to finish flight school in GTA San Andreas. A year after that, we were allowed to have laptops, but like most boys in my year, my laptop looked like this. And was absolute crap. 
I constantly kept downloading games on my laptop until I found something that ran smoothly, then I just played that. Although I hated it at the time, this was a great learning experience for me. Firstly, it was how I learned that computers have different specs and I began to understand what these specs actually meant relative to the programs I was trying to run. And secondly, it helped me find some hidden gems that still ran on poor hardware but I was unaware of, like the Simpsons Hit and Run and Bully Scholarship Edition. As we got older, everyone wanted a new game to get addicted to collectively. Fortnite didn't exist at the time, and the game that everyone in my school was interested in was Rainbow Six Siege, which everyone pirated. People who had phones would use their mobile data to power the whole thing, and they would sit in the corridors for hours playing this game. I tried my hand at it a few times. I wasn't terrible, but I was by no means good. Another game we were addicted to was FIFA. People would get FIFA on their laptops and ball out. But we couldn't play online, so it was mostly just exhibition matches most of the time with friends and some friendly competition. Except for that one time people actually put money on it, and the guy that organized it scammed everyone else and went to bed with like the equivalent of $100. Most people only believed in using the keyboard for Minecraft, so everyone basically used controllers. The majority of people brought theirs from their homes and surprisingly they almost never got stolen or broken as long as people took care of them. Oh, at a point we were even allowed to bring consoles and a friend of mine brought his Xbox One which was amazing. He let us play Forza Horizon 4 which was breathtaking but he also let us play Mortal Kombat 11, mainly so he could use us to test new moves and strategies. After years of struggling in school, I proved myself to my parents and I got my Alienware 17 for my 16th birthday and honestly, all things considered, it's one of the best investments I've ever made. Yeah, it's heavy and inconvenient to carry around, especially around school, but I won't have to worry about being able to run anything for like 5 years which is such a relief. It's so calming to come back to GTA 5 on the weekend after a hard week of academia or boil out a FIFA tournament with my boys. Now, I barely game in school. I have way too much schoolwork and extracurricular commitments to dedicate full hours to gaming. But I love gaming. It really is my passion. Also, this lack of game time is causing me to crawl ever closer to losing my virginity, my pride and joy, and I can't stand for that. To compensate, I'm going to start playing Civilization in History class, uh, iPhone Monopoly in Economics, uh, Wolfenstein in German, and Doom on my calculator in Math.